This video made use of AI to dub the audio from Punjabi to English, but we have not used AI to change or alter anything anybody has said in this video, and all of the words that you hear are direct translations of the original speech. After going toe-to-toe -to -toe with fellow Punjabi rap star Karan Aljula, Sidhu Muswala released his classic debut album PBX1. The project spawned three main singles, Jack de Macabala, which came out soon after the album, that had a hook essentially calling out his competition and sneak dissing Karan Aljula. It would also have violent lyrics where he began to hint deeper at his street activity, rapping that he could be found at crime scenes and saying that he doesn't drink alcohol but he does play with guns. And he would rap about how big stars are scared of him since he came in the industry and how his ops run from him, as well as saying that his ops get jealous when they see him driving his G-Wagon and ending the video with a message saying jealousy and success don't go together. Now, this song is an absolute banger. I've had this one on repeat since I found it. I just love the way that the beat and the melody kind of flow with his lyrics. It sort of reminds me of like a Punjabi version of French Montana's Shot Caller. Go and give it a listen. But anyway, on the track, Sidhu was sending boastful messages to his enemies, and the theme of playing gangster on the mic would continue into his next single titled Badfella, another certified hit that has 145 million views to date. This was another American-inspired beat where a lowrider is seen crawling through the city. But despite the influence from from American gangster rap, the song itself would actually pay homage to the Canadian gangsters in Brampton. A Sidhu raps through the hook about having foreign gangsters all around him when he chills in the gang-related blocks of Brampton. And Sidhu raps about having guns on him, shooting up trap houses, all while seemingly holding a police officer hostage. And he goes on to disrespect the police extensively on the track, rapping about how the police are following him and his crew and promising to destroy anyone in his way, saying that he can get to anybody and that his enemies are expensive, all while holding a rifle and saying that he will kill his enemies and saying that he solves his problems with bullets. Now, this is also one of the first songs where Sidhu would actually begin his habit of speaking about his own death as he raps that he knows he won't live long. Perhaps he didn't know it yet, but Sidhu would go on to refer to his own death frequently and arguably spoke it into existence in his music. Now, Badfellas was one of his most violent songs so far, and not everyone was feeling it. Soon after the video released, an NYPD officer of Punjabi heritage would release a video criticizing Sidhu for his violent lyrics and visuals and for not respecting the police in the video, particularly the scene where he cuffs a police officer and has him slumped on his knees. Good morning, everyone. I have seen the video to Mooswala's new song, Bad Fella. The song is very good, dude. The song is well written. The song is very good. But in the video, the guy made a little mistake. Dude, show me a policeman in this world who sits with his knees, bent in front of you and bows his head. You talk like you know. We also support you. When the profession of others is not seen as low for praising your profession. How they get these jobs, you don't know. People work day and night to get these jobs, but they're still your fans. But come here whenever where the police is behind you. If they run you over, then I will leave my job. Now, Sidhu would actually respond to these comments, saying that it's just entertainment like a movie, and in the video, he's just playing a character, going on to say that he thinks that they're just mad because it's him. If there was anyone else that was doing it, shooting the police, it would be fine. When it's Sidhu Muswala harming the police, it's seen as bad. If it was a part in a film, an actor there is villains and heroes. Everyone has a moving part. Perhaps the controversy caused Sidhu to change his ways, at least momentarily, as his next release would be the January 2019 track, I'm Better Now, this time opting to tone down the violence, releasing a much more female-focused love song. This is a breakup song essentially told from a female perspective. Interestingly, this song was kind of a moderate success to Sidhu's standards, garnering over 55 million views to date. Good numbers for any artist, but Sidhu's somebody that can put up hundreds of millions of views on the right song. But from this run of singles, Badfella, the most violent of the tracks released so far, was the biggest success. Clearly, fans wanted the violent gangster rap from Sidhu Muswala, and he would continue giving them what they wanted. In February 2019, Sidhu would release again, and it would end up being another huge hit, this time choosing producers who created a much more digestible sound for the Western countries, similar to his second hit single, So High. On the 26th of February 2019, Sidhu released possibly his best single to date, the track Legend, produced by The Kid. And the song features a West Coast-style beat, continuing to lean into Sidhu's influence from Tupac and the G-Funk music style from California, but this song has almost a quarter of a billion views, and it was the first official release that Sidhu chose to put out on his own channel rather than on the giant label T-Series' platform. And the song itself would apparently be released independently, meaning that financially Sidhu would be having a lot more to gain from his music from here on out. The song itself was once again concerned with his beefs and conflicts, and Sidhu opens the song saying that he has conflicts with countless people, followed by him once again eerily foreshadowing an early death, rapping that he knows his breaths are very limited, and going on to rap that even at such a young age, he's already considered a legend at this point at just age 25. And on the track, there would be plenty of gun talk too, with Sidhu boasting that he has a licensed firearm 
arm, even referring to the gun as his girlfriend. In the next verse, Sidhu takes further shots at Karen Algela, addressing the social media shots that were fired at him, saying that in real life they would not touch a hair on his head. He then references an interview where Algela praised Sidhu's musical talent, claiming that silently, Algela is a fan. Sidhu then again mentions how his time here is limited, creepily somehow knowing at this point that his life was indeed in its last moments, and how his photo will be spread with breaking news as if Sidhu already knew what would happen after his eventual fate. The bridge of the song then samples a notorious B.I.G. verse, again showing Sidhu's influence from that 90s golden age of hip-hop. Sidhu would then enter the third verse mentioning how his lyrics will live forever and how one of his songs is equal to a dozen of his competitors. During this time, Sidhu was really starting to break into the mainstream, becoming a titan in the Punjabi music industry, and even though he only had one full-length project to his name at this point, the number of views and streams on his singles cemented these as generational hits in India. Just like the song said, he was now a legend of the game at only 25, and he would continue this once of a lifetime run, releasing hit after hit. Next was the love song Chosen, which now sits over 80 million views, followed by another street track called Outlaw that today sits over 58 million views. And Outlaw portrayed Sidhu like a real mob boss, calling his ops and telling them the exact time that he would be having them killed, and saying that he could have anyone kidnapped at any time. And the video featured a whole bunch of high-powered weapons, with Sidhu throwing the rifle to his hitters and taking out an op personally. And in the lyrics, Sidhu is claiming to have a large group of shooters and saying that you can't ever kill his whole gang and that messing with his crew will lead to your certain death. He raps that his gang is out all night doing crimes and they wear their accusations like medals and that the things they have to do in the streets get the government talking. A bold and interesting lyric considering there had already been outcry about violent lyrics and promoting firearms against Sidhu and other Punjabi artists all through 2018 and 19. Anyway, on the track, Sidhu would also once again meditate on his own impending death, rapping that any moment could be their last. In April, he would drop his next track, East Side Flow, which now sits over 158 million views. And this was another American-themed track with a video decked out in lowriders and of course Sidhu's beloved Mercedes G-Wagon. At one point, he even hid a headline in the video, which was a Times of India article discussing Punjabi on Punjabi violence in Brampton in Canada. Now this was an article that reported on apparent violent clashes between Punjabi groups on a Brampton college campus, amid suggestions that Indian gangsters were moving to Canada under the guise of studying, but then getting in the streets. Elsewhere in the East Side Flow video, Sidhu would also show a thumbnail from a YouTube channel called Severa Star Talks, who had dropped a video about him. Now this YouTube channel actually reports extensively on the Punjabi rap scene and has made dozens of videos about Sidhu, regularly keeping track of any times the police have spoken out against him or any times that he clapped back, as well as having interviewed him personally at his home, where in one clip he actually asked Sidhu about the rising prominence of firearms in Punjabi culture, with Sidhu explaining that the wider culture dictates what everybody wears, eats and does, explaining that there's a time for everything, I guess including guns. He would also point out that there were times in the 80s and 90s where people got very active in the streets, suggesting that this is more to do with what's happening in wider society rather than the musicians making everyone violent with their songs. Controversy has arisen and caused discussions. Some came from South India and claimed that people want to start speaking Punjabi because in the Punjabi songs they are talking about guns and since then there has been an increase in crime and drugs. What does Sidhu Muswala think of this? First of all, we ask those who talk about culture, what is the definition of culture? What is culture? What kind of clothes someone wear? It changes in time. The way a person eats, behaves, the culture that a person has in the surrounding environment. That's the culture. The 80s and 90s were the time when there was a talk of getting up and burning. Expensive cars were not available then. It used to be a matter of getting up and going. And when there was such atmosphere, you talk with that calculation. But anyway, despite the controversy surrounding his violent lyrics, Sidhu continued leaning into his gangster persona. His next song was titled Mafia Style and today sits over 60 million views, despite not even having a music video. And the song had an interesting concept where Sidhu rapped that when he has his wedding, it has to be Mafia Style, with a convoy of G-Wagons, guns in his jacket, and both British pounds and American dollars being thrown into the sky. But while Sidhu's gangster reputation had the whole of India talking, his street persona would ultimately begin to cause him problems with his career. He was blocked from performing in British Columbia, Canada due to the police having and concerns of violence popping off at the show. Unable to perform in summer 2019, Sidhu would get back in the studio and continued making hits, and his next anthem would come in August 2019 when he released the song Same Beef with Bohemia and Big Bird. And the track didn't disappoint fans who had grown to love Sidhu's tough as nails gangbanging lyrics. In Same Beef, Sidhu would rap about catching cases, gaining more ops, and being a shooter, and still beefing with the same people from his past, despite his newfound fame and success. He would even claim in one ominous bar that he still rides around in the same car and that he's not hiding from anyone. Sidhu also prophetically mentions how 
how the bullet is his beginning and end, as well as saying that Toronto is still his hood. Big Bird then possibly sends some more shots at Karen Algula, claiming that boys have become rich by copying him. And Sidhu later continues to flex his weaponry, claiming to have more weapons than friends, which is essential for his enemies. The track was clearly a shot at his ops, and Sidhu was doubling down on the violent themes that were attracting him attention, both good and bad. And the formula was working. This song was a huge hit today, and sits over half a billion views. While Sidhu was capable of making love songs, it was those tough gangster rap bangers that really got in the numbers. But the following month, Sidhu experienced one of his first brushes of controversy beyond his violent lyrics, when he released the song Jatijion Morwagi. Ironically, the song didn't include any violent lyrics this time around, it was actually his usage of the name of a sacred figure in Sikh culture that actually had people offended. The song itself was more of a love song, where Sidhu praises a tough woman who he says has strength, guts, a good name, and the ability to fight. But the deeper connotations of the song and its connection to the Sikh faith left some people upset. The track was condemned by the Sikh religious community, largely because the song was made to praise the Jat caste, which technically actually goes against one of the main pillars of the Sikh religion, which is to remove the caste system and treat people equally. As Sidhu was seen by the Sikh community as a turban-wearing entertainer who had made his Sikh faith part of his image, the religion's followers believed then that Sidhu had a responsibility to represent the faith correctly in his songs. More specifically, due to the song being centred around a young, attractive, gun-wielding Jat woman who keeps male gangsters in line, he projected her as a modern incarnation of Duana Moore. Moore, a colonial-era bandit known for vigilante violence, is a revered figure and seen as a symbol of bravery, essentially something like a kind of Robin Hood of the Punjab. And the song also seemed to allude to the 18th century Sikh warrior, Mai Bago, which is apparently what offended the Sikhs the most. Ironically, it wasn't the promotion of violence and guns which he had done for years in his music, but actually offending his religious elders that got him in the most trouble. Making a song where he put himself and his jats above the rest of society, and confessing his love for a gangster woman who was based on a sacred figure from his religion, had the Sikh community furious, and things were very serious. Faced with the threat of a criminal case being lodged against him, Sidhu would have to face the Akal Tak, the highest temporal seat of the Sikhs. Seen at the bottom of the Golden Temples, this symbolises the dispensing of justice. Sidhu would face the consequences of what he had said, and he would also issue a written apology that was circulated publicly. Interestingly, fans would actually gain respect for Sidhu after he so humbly accepted his wrongdoing and asked his religious elders for forgiveness in the best way possible. But it would seem that Sidhu would learn the hard way that there would indeed be limits when it came to pushing the boundaries with his art, and in the Punjabi world, offending the faith is a far bigger violation than promoting the gangster image. So, Sidhu would humbly move forward from this incident and continue developing his career. The same month he was going through this scandal in September 2019, he was also still racking up W's, having released another hit song, Dogar, as part of a prominent movie release which racked up tens of millions of views. The movie itself, titled Terry Mari Jodi, also had a part for Muswala. He was becoming a big star in India, and soon after this he would begin having more and more success internationally, as also in 2019, Sidhu had gotten in contact with UK-based Punjabi and Sikh producer Steel Bangles. This connection was huge for Sidhu's future and legacy in music, as this connection gave him access to network with many international artists that Steel Bangles also worked with, as well as having top-tier production and mastering for his music. This connection would truly bridge the gap between the East and the West, allowing Sidhu to collaborate with many huge Western artists with some of the best beats in the game, so that he could truly conquer the international markets. And once Sidhu and Steel Bangles linked up, they would form a bond for life, collaborating on multiple songs together and eventually releasing a full-length album titled Moose Tape. Steel Bangles shares the same Punjabi and Sikh heritage as Sidhu, with his name Steel Bangles actually referring to the Kara, worn on the right hand of all Sikhs, which is one of the religion's five Ks. The Kara symbolises an attachment to God, something that of course you would always see Sidhu wearing too. Now, Steel Bangles is a legendary hitmaker in the UK, and he's worked with an all-star list of UK artists, producing numerous classic hits. Bangers with Mo Stack and AJ Tracy, and just crazy discography. And his production had played a huge role in the rise of Birmingham rapper, now influencer boxer, Mist. Mist himself was a huge staple in the Punjabi community, as he heavily featured Punjabi slang and language in his hit rap songs, such as the words Apnaz, which is a term South Asians use to determine another one of their own people, Kalas, which means black people, and Goras, which means white people. With the UK rap scene exploding, and with Punjabi lingo being pushed to the forefront, this was the perfect time for Sidhu to collaborate, and in October 2019, after first establishing that close relationship with Steel Bangles, they would release a joint track, titled 47, featuring Mist, and legendary female rapper Steflon Don. This is yet another track detailing Sidhu's love for firearms, with the song being called 47, to pay homage to the infamous automatic rifle, the AK-47. The beat itself features a traditional Punjabi sarangi being played over trap drums and heavy 808s. Another song that made it easy for Western audiences to digest the Punjabi sound, as well as another perfect example of just how infatuated Sidhu was with gangster rap from all different countries. And with a producer like Steel Bangles on the beat, the quality of the production was on a whole nother 
level, better than a lot of the stuff in Sidhu's discography so far. Further, choosing to collaborate with the UK rap legends like Mist and Stefflon Don on the same track put millions of eyes on Sidhu that he had never had on him before. The song will begin with Sidhu explaining that he will stand tall in front of gun barrels, never fearing death. And as the 808s drop, Sidhu sings the chorus, explaining that his enemies call him 47 because of the AK that he's known to tote. Mist then begins his verse, rapping in a mix of Punjabi and English, saying that he blew a chase from the Mameh, which is Punjabi from police. Sidhu then continues, singing about his infamy and how he keeps an arsenal of weaponry, even mentioning how his lyrics have shot down his enemies, eventually ruining their careers. Uh, Karen Algila is reeling after that one. Sidhu would also claim that his name is associated with a number of cases because he takes people's breath away. He then mentions his contradictions in religion as he starts the day with prayers and ends the day with sin, asking the listener to check the news to see what he's all about. And again, he mentions his warrior lineage and how he was built for fighting. 47 was a certified banger that appealed to people in both Western rap and Punjabi music. Sidhu's fame and exposure was about to reach a new high in the UK as the song exploded. It now sits at 82 million views, which is insane numbers for the UK rap scene, which remember, the UK is like the size of just one American state. It was likely that even though Mist and Steph Don were big stars in their own right in the UK, this song was a huge W for their careers too. This ended up being Mist's most viewed song of his career, with his second most viewed video currently being at 58 million views, and for Steph Don, this ultimately became her fifth most viewed single on YouTube. The song was a mainstream success and even landed at number 17 on the official UK singles charts. And this song was also when Sidhu began becoming the perfect recipe for success in the YouTube reaction community. As these crossover tracks were getting such big numbers, English speaking reactors would jump online, making videos reacting to the lyrics and breaking them down, which ultimately grew their own audiences in the Punjabi world, with many reactors getting their most viewed videos to date reacting to Sidhu Muswala's new song. Sidhu, Steflon and Mist would go on to perform the song at the Brit Asia Music Awards in 2019. With that performance, it's self sitting at 30 million views. And on the same night, Sidhu had a clean run at the awards, winning in four categories, including the Best Album Award for PBX1, as well as Track of the Year for Legend, and the award for Best International Male Act, and Best Lyricist. It was safe to say that Sidhu ended 2019 on an all-time high, after bridging the gap with his Western audience and sweeping the award shows on an international stage. The next year, Sidhu chose to continue bridging that gap, reaching new highs in both India and abroad. And another development would be that throughout 2020, Sidhu began getting more and more active on social media, and he would treat his social media presence the same way as his music. In fact, online, he chose to go all out on the gangster persona, showing off his firearms, as well as the tattoos he was getting, and letting the world know that he was really living the dangerous lifestyle he portrayed in his raps, taking the authentic gangster rap persona to levels never really seen before in the Punjabi music community. But behind the scenes, it wasn't just his gangster persona that was developing, but also his real ties and interactions with real gangs in the underworld of India and Canada, with these dangerous activities ultimately attracting him a lot of negative attention that would ultimately come back to haunt him, from both the gangsters running in the streets of India and Canada, as well as the authorities that are meant to protect him from them.